Wait, are you going to speak first? Oh, <laughs> no. Uh, hey, how's it going? All right, hello, everybody. Uh, What's thanks up? for uh, whatever platform you're listening to us on. Downloaded it or YouTubed it, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Dylan Fleury here with the... This guy, Aiden Mills. <laughs> uh, and welcome to another episode of uh, Two Gents Opinions, bud. Um, can you say it too? Because you probably don't say it as... Two Gents, One Opinions, bud. Two Gents, One Opinions? Is it, was it? No, Two, two Gents, gents Opinions, bud. Two Gents Opinions, bud. <laughs> don't even know the name of the whole show. I just want to see if you tried to do an accent on the bud. I wanted to, but I resisted. So this is uh, episode three. Um, I don't know why I keep saying episodes. I like to keep track yeah. of them just in case. Yeah, it's good to be detailed. But anyways, uh, so yeah, I mean, right now, because we just started, we're going to do a lot of not like on the point movies, just kind of like random movies we talk about. Mm-hmm. At some point, we'll, we'll start doing like more recent ones. Yeah, we'll be up to date. Yeah, but this one, I mean, we're, gonna, we're getting a little late on the Wonder Woman talk, but I just recently saw it because I did not feel like paying money to go see it. Did you pay money to see it? Um, no, no, I watched it online. Okay. There was Korean subtitles, <laughs> but it was HD, so it was worth yeah, it. That's all right. Um, but yeah, so we're going to, today we're going to hit on Wonder Woman, um, Insomnia, because I've never seen it, mm-hmm. and I love Christopher Nolan, mm-hmm. and I just, the one day I was like, oh, I should check this out. Um, I'm going to probably get into Goon 2 a bit, you haven't seen it, but I, I just really want to say a lot about that, and then you're going to get into Logan Lucky. Yep, get into Logan Lucky. Um, Daniel Craig, with a Southern accent. It's so weird. Yeah, it's really is he weird. good at it? He actually is very good at yeah. it, but right. we'll come to that, I guess. Um, and then I think we're just going to get into uh, Planet of the Apes, Rise and Dawn. And I mean, if you want to talk a bit without spoilers, War. Yeah. Um, just because I'm probably going to go see it soon. And I just don't really, because I forgot how good those movies were. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so I guess you want to just start with... Uh, let's, get, let's start with the hot topic. The Wonder Woman? <laughs> the big one. Yeah. All right, so I guess we'll say that, like, we were talking about it before, but I'll get... Okay, so yeah. I guess we'll say it's not a terrible movie. No, it's not bad. It's an okay movie, but it's an okay movie that's getting way blown out of proportion as this amazing thing that everybody should see. Yeah. It's like when you're comparing it to the other three or we'll have four movies, Man of Steel, Batman Begins... Not Batman Begins, Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad. I mean, yeah, it's better doesn't make it amazing though no and it's and it's only better in terms of that it actually kind of f- tried to follow the marvel exactly it's very format marvel. yeah it's safe it's a safe it's a safe it's bet. a safe movie but with a lot of things that it's like oh how do we get out of this situation oh we'll just make something happen yeah it's, it's like oh this will just happen uh, um so i'll get into that i'll say this so um the trench scene that everybody loves when she walks through the trenches mm-hmm. first of all they're walking through the trenches and all of a sudden, this like random woman stops Wonder Woman, and is like, "You need to help us! Like our town got taken over! Like why is this woman in, in the trenches? That's How did true. she get there? If she <laughs> was in, she passed no man's land. Yeah, she get ran, ran for, straight through. Apparently, but how'd she get? She was only there to tell Wonder Woman to that this town, fight, yeah. which anybody could have did, and also she could have found out herself by using the lasso on somebody secretly. She could have just lassoed some dude and been like, what the fuck's over there? She didn't, she didn't use the lasso at all. She used it, no, Chris, or uh, sorry, uh, Steve Trevor used it more. Yeah. There was the one time where he did it to himself to like prove, <laughs> oh, which yeah. was kind of funny. Yeah. But he, he was great. I'll just say quickly, I don't understand how he put up with Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman was the most ridiculous, most unreasonable woman in this movie. He's like, we, no, <laughs> we need to like move on. We gotta like this, we can't deal with no man's land right now. This is a small thing. When you got to move on to a bigger thing, she's like, no, we have to save everybody. Yeah, she's very headstrong. Come on. Um, so then, and then when she walks out of the trenches, she should have just got shot in the head right away. Like, come on. That, like, to say that was an epic scene, that was the most bullshit scene ever. She just walks along, deflecting bullets. She's never seen bullets in her life. How does she know how fast they're coming in to stop them? Mm, true. She saw arrows. Like, come on. For her to just, like... What the fuck? Exactly. She's very quick. She's a quick learner, apparently. Oh, my God. And, like, just... What are her powers, by the way, too? So, she's indestructible, but she's not bulletproof? The, yeah. The one scene I hate is when they're in the... Uh, she takes out the whole bell tower. Uh, the whole... They held, had this whole arc with... Um, oh, his name... Oh, me. my God. The sniper yeah. that you think oh. he's going to redeem himself at the end. I thought that's what the whole scene was there for. But, no, it was literally just for Wonder Woman to blow something up. Yeah, it's like, he's supposed to be this great marksman, and then he can't shoot. He never does, does he? Like, no, and then and then afterwards, um, Wonder Woman gets pissed about it, but then, when they clear up the town, and they all have a few drinks, and he sings, he's like, I'm sorry, guys. She's like, don't worry about it. That Wonder Woman impression? Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know where that came from. Yeah. But yeah, no, she's, she was just like, they're all buddy-buddies again. It's like, oh, okay, cool, you, you fucked up, but whatever. Yeah. She literally just threw her shield, and it blew up a whole... Like, well, no, no she, she like, jumped off... 
Yeah, like, that's the one. Yeah. Oh, she, she punches through. The that's the one, yeah. Which, again, why did the guy not just shoot her in the head? Yeah. When she's flying through the air, like she, when she was walking through the trenches, the only scene, and the CGI is terrible in it, the only scene that looked good, the fight scene, was when she goes into the town and, like, goes into the one building and fights everybody in the building. Yeah. That actually looked cool. All the other fight scenes looked terrible. Oh, when she's, like, fighting the soldiers. Fighting yeah, them. like, that looked cool. But, like, the, the trench scene, like, come on, it was so cheesy and just ridiculous. Like, for me, it, it's not really memorable. I've seen it, uh, like, you've seen it more recently than I have, huh. so I, I can't... I, it doesn't, it's not a film that really stood out. Like, it was all right. It was good, and I get the importance of, like, to children and that, and, like, as a role model. But she's is, not even she's a good... Important. She's a ditz in the movie. She goes, take me to, take me to the war. And he's like, what do you mean, take me to the war? It's everywhere. She knows what war is. <laughs> she's like, true. take me to the war like it's a person. That's, there's, there's a point where it's just, like... Is she just being naive or is she just not like just saying things <laughs> to, stay, like, to try to be funny? Yeah, they're exactly. trying to be jokes, and yeah. then it's like, um, and then all of a sudden, when she walks into London and she sees a baby, she's like, Oh, a baby! She doesn't know what babies are, they don't have babies where she is. She was the only baby, and she was like molded from Zeus. True, there's no children there, right? Nope. So, no. who the fuck she knows? So, it's just her maternal instincts, I guess, because <laughs> I guess Probably. every woman needs it. I, like, every why is she going, Oh, a baby? What? That's like a room scene right there. Like when he sees the dog, he's like, "Hey, doggy!" Oh, hey. It's so unnecessary. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Comparing the room to one uh, of the I'm, yeah, it's maybe a bit of a stretch, but <laughs> but just so many things like that. And then when they're like trying to break into like the Nazi compound when they're having that party or something, and they're like, "How are we gonna get in? We need a car." And the one guy's like, "Hong Kong, hey guys, got a car? Whoa, where'd you get that? Oh, found it. There's a bunch of them over there." Yeah. Well, okay, I guess we're just, sure. And then the guy's like, let me be your driver. And then, I don't want to fault the movie for this, because I don't think Captain America, do they speak German in Captain America at all? Or do, uh, they do probably a few times. I think they do, yeah. Do they ever in Wonder Woman? Because of that scene where Chris Pine pull, pulls sure. up to it, and he's speaking English the entire time. Right. I'm, I'm not going to fault it for that, because movies do that. Yeah, I get that it. it does happen a lot. But for him, the way he got into it was so ridiculous, where his driver's like, I'm sorry, I forgot his pass. And the guy's like, okay, sure, just come into our little party. Yeah. Where where also is this island? Is it in the the, the Greek area? The Amazon? Like where... Yeah. Is it in Greece? So basically it's like hidden, but yeah. not really. But like what, what, where in the planet? I mean, is it like Greece? It's like in the middle of the ocean, isn't it? Yeah, but like the ocean's a very broad term. Yeah, like it's in the middle of it. 70% <laughs> of the world. But yeah, so just take the middle of it. I think it... Because it's going to be... I think it's somewhere in Greece. I don't understand why it's kind of like... Yeah, it's... I don't know. Or Nick. But no, it's, it it wasn't a terrible film. It just didn't really stand out. It went through the motions, um, and then I thought the end fight scene was boring. It's just like it's the same as Man of Steel with General Zod. It was just mind-numbingly boring. It's like see, bang, 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 bang. See that guy put all that armor on? Just didn't suit him. No, it's he was like some old guy, and then he just... he's a great actor. But that, like, it was like it was. Um, it just kind of felt out of character. Like, he didn't really feel... I know they were trying to go for the twist, but he didn't really feel, like, evil or anything like that. And just, also, okay, so the sword was in, was useless. Wonder Woman was the weapon to kill him? Yes. So why... So he was trying to get... Okay, but why wouldn't they... Did, did everybody know that, or just he knew that? I think he just... he and Well, I think they knew it back in Amazon. Yeah. Well, then why aren't they telling her that? Because she needs to... Get, like, why would they put her in with a fake sword? That's like giving somebody a fake gun and being like, go kill this guy, and then boom, you're dead. Yeah. I guess she needed to, like, earn Find it the or inner something. power, yeah. Yes, the... Which also, she goes kind of deaf at one point, so, like, she's indestructible, but she's not bulletproof in her hearing to get fucked up. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a big part of it. I don't know. And, like, uh, what is... There's, um... Oh, and then that entire... When they leave... So, she's not allowed to leave, and they're like... Very adamant on that. And then she steals the sword and the shield and gets on the boat and then all the women come and they're like, all right, fine, just go. We're cool with it. And then that boat scene, that entire boat scene is just about banging. Yeah, that's true. It's just her talking about Chris Pine sitting over there. She's like, why are you laying over there? He's like, well, I'm just being a gentleman. She's like, come here. And it's like, oh, she's like courteous. And she's like, oh, sex. I know what sex is. Yeah. True. And then that's all it was. I think it was also all setting up how it's going to end with Chris Pine's character as well. It's just to, to kill him off. It's kind of that emotional attachment. Uh, but who cares? You like this is the one thing too. Like, um, if you want to kind of go with Captain America, I know Captain America is still human, but his entire 
purpose, like his entire job, he only cares about saving the world, saving people. And yeah, sure, he wants to hook up with Peggy Carter, but we never mm-hmm. see him, like, we don't have a sex scene, we don't see him, like, he just likes her, I think he yeah. kisses her maybe once, yeah. but that's it, right? He's just about saving the world. Wonder Woman <laughs> is basically set up the entire time just to bank uh, Steve Trevor. Yeah. And they have, why are we seeing this love scene? We don't need, like, it's the middle of a war. She wants to save people, but she has enough time to go hook up with Steve Trevor. <laughs> like, have some fucking morals. Like, I don't need to see that in this movie. Make Wonder Woman, like Captain America, make her about just saving the world. Yeah. I don't know. Do you also notice that no one bats an eyelid that you have Chris Pine's, like, pretty much nude in the movie? No one says it's sexism oh, he's holding his dick. or, um... Just holding his dick. Yeah, no one says voyeurism or anything like that. No I, I, I don't know. I'm kind of fine with that in terms of like, I don't know. You, you see, like, I know you just like don't do one because you did the other. Yeah. But I don't know. It's, it's just, but it's I just don't a guy mind holding it. his dick. It was kind of funny. I don't mind it if like they are fine with the reversal. Like, no, but I think that we've seen the reversal. If there was a reversal, true. we'd see her, we'd see her boobs and shit. Yeah. You, you saw his ass. Like, it's a little different. You know what I mean? I, it's still it's glorifying it's the, of the of a body at the end of the day. Like, yeah, like, but I just, I don't know. That was like the whole that. Star Trek Into Darkness discussion. Like oh, when she was in her underwear? Yeah, Alice was in her underwear. Oh, but there's also a scene when Chris Pine is just in his underwear. Yeah. Well, but I think it's... Nobody yeah. really... It's still both of them. But also, also, those are little things that, no, like, that whole Alice Eve thing kind of, like, came up a bit, but nobody really cares, man. It's just people trying to make us think about it. Yeah, it's true. If she was, like, full-ass naked... Maybe you got a case, but she's in her underwear. Some people want to make a fuss. I don't care. I don't know. People do get strung up on the small things, and but yeah, I'm just trying to think of what about Wonder Woman really stood out. What was like uh, made this song? What stood out? Oh, maybe the fact that um, Steve Trevor's uh, secretary um, doesn't even bat an eye of, of, of at Wonder Woman. She's like, oh, oh, you met an Amazon check? Cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna help her out. Oh. Oh, nobody in London cares that she's trying to walk through a door with a sword and a I, shield. Everybody's yeah. just walking by. They're like, "Oh yeah." I think that it does kind of. Like, if we started that, we have to do that about every superhero movie. Like, but can can you pick one that is like that? Because I'll I'll totally concede the point. I don't know. Maybe I'm just went into it and I'm like, with this idea that like it's not going to be that good, and I kind of like maybe had a bias towards it. Mm. And obviously, like I said, with the whole like not speaking German thing, that happens in all movies. Yes. But in terms of like these little things, I guess. But I I don't know. Can you really nitpick? I know you. I, we're like, kind of nitpicking, like, but not really. Not the top of my head, not really. Like, but if we were to like really address, like, there's things with like, ET. Like, ET comes in. No well, one. I'm not really a big ET fan. Bats, so. I, know, I hate the film, but <laughs> what a terrible thing to bring up. But, like, no one bats an eye like when ET is about really. Like, oh, it's an ET. Okay, but alien. also ET is about an alien. It's like I don't know. Wonder Woman is set in this world where like, it's not like she's like this. She looks like a human. Yes. And she's running around with a sword and nobody cares. True. I don't know. It was just weird that nobody even, like, stopped and was like... Nobody was like, whoa, what the shit? Like, everybody just, like, minding their bits, like, oh, yeah. see this every day? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. We are, like, I don't know. I, maybe it is nitpicking. It is a little bit nitpicking, but... I'll say... I'll say... Is there anything good to say about Mormon? I don't know. It's... It's better in terms of... What? I don't know. I don't even know if it's better in terms... I kind of liked the tone DC was... Like, I didn't hate Man of Steel. No. They're just messy movies because they didn't know what to do with them, and they over put, they put CGI over everything, and they made it just mind-numbingly boring. I think that's what the cardinal sin was that they just made it boring. Mm-hmm. They made a Batman movie boring. They made a, a film about like the well, Joker no, the Batman part. part was good. That was the only good part about that. Batman it was, but still, it was, overall, it was boring. Like it was just yeah. Like, and then like Suicide Squad was just a mess. I mean, no one knew what they wanted to do with it. It was kept being chopped and changed. At least with Wonder Woman, they just played it safe. They're like. Let's not go too overboard. We need to get this right. I feel like there was. You can kind of like just smell the desperation. Like let's just get this one right. Let's get the faith back in the viewership. But I think that faith is gonna go again when Justice League comes out because I can't get behind it. It doesn't look good. It and doesn't look good. So I think we should preface this by saying right now we're not like Marvel fanboys, DC haters. Oh no, at all. I love so, Batman. Yeah. So this is what I'll say. Like. I enjoy the Marvel movies more because the Marvel Marvel set up their universe. Mm. So if I was like, this is what I was saying before, like if I'm a DC fan, like a legit DC fan, I would be pissed right now at the quality of movies you're getting. You shouldn't be going, our movies are great, Marvel sucks. You should be going, no, we want DC to do what Marvel does. No much better if we would have got Superman and then a Batman movie 
and then you build the Batman Superman fight, yeah. and like you kind of also maybe you get a Batman movie where Robin dies, and then yeah. you see Batman slowly getting to the point where he he's, he doesn't care anymore and he wants to yeah. just murk people, and then Suicide Squad. If we saw some of these villains before, and then we got to see them team they, up, they rushed it because they, they were trying to play catch up. So, and that's why I'm like, that's why you gotta criticize these movies for that, and that's why if you're a DC fan, you should be going, our movies are great. You should be going, fuck, we we should yeah, we should build our universe better. You gotta like really aim at the producers that they're trying to rush, they're trying to mm-hmm. scramble, they're trying to compete with Marvel. Mm-hmm. Um, and I saw an interesting article. It was like basically they kind of the blame was put on, not directly, but Chris Nolan and his Dark Knight trilogy for the reason why DC are behind. And the, the reason being, Dylan's shaking his head, <laughs> the reason being is that because while we were having the Dark Knight trilogy, which was a great, amazing trilogy, that was when M, the, the MCU started. Like 2008 was when Iron Man came out, that's when Dark Knight came out. Uh-huh. Dark Knight is the superior film, easily, for me. To, to what? Dark Knight is the superior film to, to what? Iron Man. Um, yeah, yeah I, for, I would say that. Iron, Iron Man's, yeah. For me... I mean, Iron Man's a good movie, but yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, for me, The Dark Knight, is, it's got more layers to it. It's got the phenomenal performances, great scenes. And well, and The Dark Knight's, like, not really a superhero movie. Like, Iron Man is no. a straight-up superhero movie. Exactly, and it has the same kind of boring, repetitive yeah, ending. for sure. But, like, yeah, and then, but that's... So they allowed to establish it, but everyone obviously wanted to finish the Nolan trilogy, and when mm-hmm. that did, then DC are like, oh... Okay, now we've got to play catch up because they built a huge successful set franchise. We're kind of behind here, and you've also set the bar so high. Like, mm-hmm. how can you go into like trying to compete with the films you just made and then into a franchise that you're already lacking behind? Like, yeah. So the bar was set very high, and then they've not really jumped anywhere near. Well, to it. And they kind of like went like, okay, Nolan was like a dark tone of Batman. Now all our movies exactly. are dark. Yeah, there was like you have this really grounded. Yeah. But they didn't catch that grounded realism at all, really. No. But also, so this I gotta say, who cares if that you can still do? You can still set up a DC universe while Nolan's trilogy going on. If you know Nolan doesn't want to be a part of that, yeah. you can still do Superman, which they did. Well, it was still after, like, and Nolan did produce it. It was after, but you could have yeah. did it before. Like I know what I mean. Like you didn't have to wait. You could have went like, "Hey, Nolan, we want to do a DC universe," and he goes. Now nah, I'm cool. I just want to do my thing. Sure, and you sure, go, sure. All right, cool. We'll let you do that. We'll wait till you're done with Batman. We're oh. going to do like Superman shit. And then when Batman's done, we'll introduce a new Batman, new Superman. 100%. That's what's going on right now, right? That's what Scorsese and Todd Phillips are getting in on this uh, Joker movie, like Ooh. original Joker movie. Should we talk about that? I think bit? we've got it. Yeah. yeah, but keep going talking about it. But yeah, no, like, it. but that's why they're going that down that. They, and it shows they can do it, that they can do a separate thing. From the un- the cinematic mm-hmm. universe, um, but they the TV shows are separate. Exactly, so they could yeah they re- definitely could have done it, and that's what they're resorting to right now is to do something separate because they know that if they rush it, if they do too many like throw too many things at one movie, then it's just going to go wrong. So they yeah. have to spread it out. There's exactly. too much material not to spread it out, and they do need to take their time because they've rushed it and they've kind of mess- made a mess of things right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, hundred percent. I totally agree. Side note: Can we talk about James Bond or something? <laughs> Random point, but we can do like a separate podcast about James Bond because I have the entire DVD, so I gotta watch all the movies. Just because there's news come out that it could be a streaming film, that okay. because Apple and Amazon are bid for it, so they could be only on the internet. Oh, which is pissing me so with yeah. with Daniel Craig. With Daniel Craig, that's weird. And Christopher Waltz. Why is that? Why, why is that buggy? Oh, it really bugs me. It's got to be a cinematic release for Bond. They can still put it in they the theaters. I know, but it's Beast and Nation did that, didn't they? They did, but yeah. So did Hulk yeah. as well and all that. But yeah. yeah. All right. We can we can do like an entire podcast about Bond. Oh, I'm down for that. Because I still got to watch the movies. Oh, yeah, I'm down oh. for that. I've got the Craig trilogy and the... Well, I have the entire... I have all 25, yeah. Oh, I need to steal that off you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you can borrow it, but... <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> yes, anyway, back to... The so, uh, oh, I guess on DC. So, yeah, so the idea that Scorsese... Okay, Todd Phillips, the Todd Phillips. Hangover guy? Hangover, It's a uh, weird Dogs. combination. Yeah, right and Orange. Oh, I guess War Dogs, yeah. But anyways, so yeah, it's Scorsese, Todd Phillips, and they want Leo. They want Leo to be the Joker, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? You're more of a DC, like, you know, more of a Batman fan than I am. Yeah, I'm a, I love Batman. I love the Joker as character. He's one so of are you favorites. into that? I'm on the fence, if I'm honest. Like, Leo is obviously a talent. We saw in Django Unchained that he can play the kind of crazy psychopath that's... And he, he is it's a little of, bit different though the Joker like try to picture him doing like a weird laugh 
Is that, but it is going to be before he turns into like clown makeup Joker. Oh, this oh, because it is an origin, but I thought it was going to be. I don't think it's going to. I think it's going to be him as a struggling stand-up comedian. So it might even well, have it's like even a, weird. It might even have like a king of comedy kind of tone, like in a in a weird. Like, Ooh, dark, now you got me way. back. I was off, now I'm back on. Yeah, like it could have that kind of. I just, tone. I just don't see like. Could you really see Leonardo DiCaprio as like a struggling stand-up? I'm on the if I saw him doing stand-up, I'd be like, dude, just be a model. I'm like, really on the fence. Like I could see it, and I can't. But maybe isn't he like a, a touch too old to be the Joker? Because I mean, if he's going to turn into the Joker. Um, no, I don't, I don't think so. I think, you don't know, when did the Joker become the Joker? We don't know. Uh, I'd say he's 30s. In his 30s? Oh, if it, but what's yeah, and Leo's what, in his 40s? Reading the killing joke, yeah. Um. It's hard to tell. No, I, I think you can just, you can just say he's in his 30s. He doesn't look old. Yeah. Like, I mean, 30s and 40s isn't that big of an age gap in terms of how you look. Who, who would your pick be for, uh. The Joker? The Joker, in, in a grounded movie like this. Because the thing is, it's always so hard because who yeah. would have called Heath Ledger being such a good Joker? That's the thing, right? No, like I, when I saw like Knight's Tale, I was like, how can he be that great Joker? But you know who I kind of like right now who's doing the Joker thing is that guy who's in Gotham. Oh, um, he's pretty decent at it. The Jerome kid. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's pretty good at doing that. Um, yeah, he's, he's got the but oh uh, god, fuck. So he's like in your mind, you're trying to picture like I'm trying to picture. W- an actor that could pull off like a maniacal laugh. Yes. That's like the most iconic thing you need. Yeah. Uh, I think Mark Hamill got that laugh down. Why not? Yeah, you could. Yeah, Mark Hamill. Um, so I, I think. I'm trying to think of nowadays who could be. You got somebody? Two, two actors that are. Uh, one's definitely too old now. But Ryan Gosling. No, it wasn't going to be, but that could be interesting. No, as you know, I can't <laughs> see it. But Willem Dafoe would have been great. Yeah, that's good. And uh, Ben Mendelsohn. Trying to picture that is. He's uh he's actually in Dark Knight Rises. He's the one that kind of Bane kills. Ooh, like, Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. <laughs> yeah, back <laughs> in the day, like why not? But like a young Ben Mendelsohn. Uh sorry, who who is he? You I said Dark Knight Nights really went to uh I'm just gonna find Gary Oldman. Find a picture of him. Yeah, yeah picture of him. Well I'm doing that. I'll just, I yeah, I don't know, man. Like that's such a thing where it's like you wanna think of somebody good. Um I get Leo, obviously, because of Scorsese. Um, that's him. Like Christian a Bale. younger. Who's younger? Okay, yeah, the face, yeah. Yeah. Christian Bale. Christian. Bale. I actually hear, hear like people were saying Christian Bale. Let's let's see the odds. Who's odds to be new Joker? While you look at that, I was always thinking um, for the Dark Knight when they were doing the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, I want to see the Riddler, and I always thought Johnny Depp would be an interesting Riddler. Yeah. Um. Ooh, James yeah. Franco. Jeez. That guy's a chameleon when it comes to acting. <laughs> seeing his, seeing his, uh, when he did uh, Alien in Spring Breakers, doing that with like uh, like uh, Dave Sklar or Dave oh, Skyler yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that that combo of people. It's a great Joker. I'm into it. Um, but yeah, no, that that's yeah. It's gonna be an interesting movie. You're very interesting. Um, I also don't like how DC is doing this kind of like separate things, but on topic of DC, do you see that uh, one of the guys in the running to play Shazam is... Oh, uh, wait, John Cena? John, John Cena. Cena! Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. And I was pumped until I read that The Rock's Black Adam movie isn't a separate movie. I thought he was playing Black Adam in the Shazam oh, movie. Oh, so, shit. Yeah, he's playing, his own, he's playing his own movie. So I'm like, damn, I want, I want The Rock Cena to... Do a movie together. That would be pretty epic. And that would be great. Um, I still think like like a, like a cop movie or like a daddy's home type movie would be perfect for those two. But like a cop movie, I think. Like a lethal weapon type jokey. But right. more of like a comedy version of that. Like the other guys. That kinda, would be interesting. The other guy's style with like the rock and Cena. <laughs> no, that was it. Pain and Game. Pain and Game. Oh, I love Anthony Mackie, but could you imagine John Cena, The Rock, and Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> oh my god, that movie just got a million times better. What's true, yeah. What's true, yeah. Uh, I, can, I can find a new one for the... Any old yeah, it's show, probably but, not anything. So, yeah. um, but, uh, to think how many, uh, what do you think the chances are that on that list will be at least one woman and one black guy? Pretty high. <laughs> well, it, it, uh, Michael B. Jordan. Yes. And Charlie Theron. I know. <laughs> I know. Karen Gillan wants to be the Joker. 
Uh, I can't remember what. Sure. In okay. what? It wasn't. I don't think it was in that film, but it's in something that she wants to be the Joker. Um, I don't know. Be Harley Quinn. She's she's like the female Joker. Yeah. I don't know the idea that like I don't really care at this point, but I mean they're they're fictional characters, but at the same time, Margot Robbie does have that down. Yeah. Like she is the perfect Harley Quinn. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, fuck, we kind of got off track here. We definitely went off track. So we just talked about Wonder Woman. Yeah. So yeah, that's our take. I mean, and it turned into the new Joker movie again. Yeah, so. I don't know, spitballing, but yeah. yeah. So that was Wonder Woman. Um, but I guess oh, on top of we we were kind of talking about Christopher Nolan. Yeah, I was gonna say that. So it's we like, could talk about Insomnia. So you saw Insomnia, right? I've seen it. Yep. How long ago? Uh, so I actually rewatched it a few months back. Oh, nice. yeah, that's perfect. Good. Yeah. And uh, what are your take? What's your take on? I really liked it. It is good. It's eh? a very good movie. Different than what I expect from a Nolan movie, but still great. Yeah, like I love the um the chase scene through like kind of the, the lobby yard. Oh, oh the too. lobby yard was great. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, and he kind of gets trapped under the logs. Yeah, that was great. Uh, but also yeah, the in the fog as well. With how he shoots his partner, right? Or the officer? Yeah, he shoots the officer. Oh, he shoots his partner. Yeah, yeah, he shoots his partner. Yeah, the guy who might he was gonna talk. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I thought Robin Williams is fantastic. Oh, dude, that guy, that guy would have been a great Joker. Robin oh, Williams? God. Oh, yeah. Struck and Comedian? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That dude, would have God. Perfect. He's so creepy in that movie, man. Yeah. Have He's you so seen creepy. One Hour Photo? No, but oh. I, I've seen trailers. Like, you can just get off the trailer. That's like, terrifying. Oh. Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Doubtfire is a horror movie trailer. It's like the best thing. Yeah. Seen. All those cosmetics. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, he would have yeah, been a good Joker. Been great. Damn. In another, in an alternate universe. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, I thought it was great. Uh, great story. Uh, I love the idea that it's always, like, it always seems like daytime. Like yeah. The first little joke where he's like, let's go to school right now. And they're like, dude, it's like 3 a.m. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh shit, really? Um, yeah. And how it kind of like, it slowly plays into it. Like, the insomnia slowly starts to affect him. It doesn't kind of like affect him the entire movie. No. It slowly does. And at the end, it really messes with him. Yeah, it breaks him down and then, um, well, spoilers, but finally gets to sleep yeah so i mean it's been a long time if you don't want to hear spoilers on insomnia we're gonna say them uh i mean you should have saw it by now but maybe just stop it go see it yeah just great movie it's so anybody who hasn't seen it it's a movie about there's a murder in this small town alaska Mm -hmm. uh al pacino's character and this other guy go to investigate it yeah al pacino's kind of like had a rough time because all his cases are coming undone yeah internal so. affairs is investigating them um yeah. and you're not sure why but obviously like his partner saying he might talk to them because they're really digging into him yeah um and you find out later on it's because um what did he do he he framed or killed some guy who to get the i think he frames someone to get the yeah. answers oh yeah because they, they show uh through it you see like glimpses of like uh the white cloth yeah and the blood yeah and you see that it's him putting blood is that like the yeah. guy probably did it but how was was trying to get him like framed with the evidence yeah because he would have got off yeah and this murderer would have got away so he framed him and then even though that might have been the only thing you ever framed a guy on now everybody else's cases get thrown out because yeah. they're all t- they could be tampered with exactly so it's then so the movie's about so that's what it is right and then his partner's like i might have to talk and he's like if you talk you're gonna screw over everything and then you get the scene where they're chasing after robin williams and he's in the fog, and then he sees somebody, and he shoots them, and you find out that it's his partner, and you're not sure if he did it on purpose or not, which he kind of confesses at the end. Yeah, he does. He kind of did. Yeah. He's like, I don't fucking know, but I probably did. Yeah. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just creepy, and then, like, Robin Williams manipulates him, where he's like... Yeah, that's, he's hiding in plain sight the whole time. It's like, you don't have to, it's not a game of, a guessing game, who did it. No, he knows who yeah, did it. Robin Williams doesn't even try to hide it. He like, tries to work with him because he's like, and that's what's so great about it because like if he would have never shot his partner, yeah, then they would have got Robin Williams. Robin Williams like, I know you shot your partner. Yep. I got you on confession saying it, tape confession saying it. Yeah. Um, and I love that. Oh, that interrogation room scene was great. When like before we're on the boat, he's like, don't bring this up. Yeah. Oh, so I think he was like, straight. don't bring it up. And then in the interrogation room, he brings it up, and Al Pacino just loses it. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's so good though. Very, very well done. Different than any Nolan. If you know Nolan, for me it was like Batman movies, mm. Inception, uh, Interstellar, Memento. I kind of went like middle, backwards, forwards. Right, yeah. I don't think, I'll also say this, I wasn't a fan of Dunkirk, but that was not a bad movie in any means. No. It was a great movie. But it's not your type It wasn't my type of movie. So yeah, I don't think Nolan's ever made a bad movie, man. No. 
Like, can sure. you really, like, I mean, I, I know some people aren't the fans of, like, the way Inception was done in Stellar, but they're still great. Yeah, I, I, like, there's definitely issues with his movies, but I like to say that probably, like, The Dark Knight Rises is the weakest. <laughs> is yeah, something. and even then, it's still not, it's still a good movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I loved uh, Following, his first one. It's a little yeah, bit, Yeah, I've seen it. It's definitely, like, you can tell it's kind of amateurish, cheap, but it's a good film. Um, and it's kind of the first time you really see the Cobb character that comes back in Inception. What? Yeah, like this whole idea of the thief called Cobb. It's not about dreams and that, but... Yeah, but there's the guy in the movie's called Cobb? Called Cobb, yeah. I thought, okay, so what's the following of it? So basically it's a guy, like, I think it's a, if I remember correctly, it's about a writer or a, yeah, who has like trouble, kind of like writer's block, basically. So he follows people and gets lives. And then he follows a burglar called Cobb and then kind of gets caught in the whole... Ooh, cool. Uh, story of it. All. I can't remember, I have to rewatch it, it's been a long time, but yeah. I'm liking it and... That was an interesting premise that it just follows people around and mm-hmm, gains their stories. It kind of adds things in his uh, in his mind. And uh, is there any like actual like connection to Cobb and Inception, or is it kind of just I, like I mean, the, the look? It's kind. Of, I think it's like for me. I think it's the cap. Uh, sorry, not Cap. Nolan's alter ego, like Cobb, because it's kind of got the same hairstyle, same kind of fashion. Like if you look at Cobb and Inception. Yeah, he looks just like what Christopher Nolan looks like. Yeah, that's true. The hair back. He's Minus got the goatee. Yeah, no, does he have a goatee in the Inception? He does, right? Yeah. No one does have a goatee. Sometimes he does. I don't think I've ever seen Nolan with a goatee. Really? Yeah. Pretty sure yeah. he's had Look, one. If I can find one, I'll throw a picture of But uh, he's got the same kind of fashion choice. Yeah. And I just feel like Cobb is, is uh, Nolan to some extent. But just like Johnny Depp is Tim Burton to some extent. Yeah. <laughs> Just keeps yeah, because he just keeps putting his wife with Johnny Depp. Yeah, movie. exactly. Yeah. Um. So, oh, I saw a meme where it's like it showed like all the movies that Johnny Depp and Helen Bottom Carter are in. Yeah. And it's like this is Tim Burton's way of slowly saying he wants to have a threesome with Johnny Depp. Pretty much. <laughs> just looking that way. Oh, quick if side. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Quick side track here. Um. Can you explain why uh, Christopher Nolan has a British accent but his brother doesn't? No. <laughs> Is it maybe because like did his brother like go to like like LA before him or like does his brother just adapt more like I'm so sure like, I don't really know. Like, I know they're both English so I don't get why yeah that's like the most confused because the first time I heard his brother I'm like oh okay yeah um but yeah yeah so uh, but no yeah uh, Insomnia is a good film and uh, definitely worth a watch yeah oh yeah hundred percent um so yeah Insomnia. Yeah. That's really what we can say about something. Uh, and then I think we can go into the Planet of the Apes movies. Yep. So, I was going to go see War of the Planet of the Apes. I kind of want to rewatch the first two, but I was like, I don't really care if I do. I remember them enough. Right. I forgot how much I kind of forgot yeah. and how great they were, man. Like, the Rise of the Planet of the Apes is hands down, like, so the original is what it is, but Rise of the Planet of the Apes is, I would say, the best ape movie. Right. Have, is War better, do you think? Yeah. It is? Oh, okay. So for my stand right now, I would say Rise was, in terms of, unless you saw the original Planet of the Apes when it came out, or you have no idea about the twist, Hmm. the movie's a little slow. I like the original? Yeah. It's a little slow. I like it, though. It's a good movie. Yeah. And it's interesting, and like, but like for its time, because it came out in like the 60s. Yep. And so like everybody's in like ape masks and shit. It's weird. It's all about communism, right? That's what basically the whole... Subtext of it always. I don't know. I'm too dumb to get the subtext like, on movies. I just like watch them and go. Communism Ooh, and nuclear fallout and that. Well, because so. all of them, yeah. Because there's the what's the third one? They do the nukes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like the brain people. Mm. Yeah, I got weird. That did, did, um, the franchise did get very strange. But I just thought, like, in terms of the movie, it's a good movie for what it is. But like, yeah, unless you saw it at the times, Rise of the Planet of the Apes is way better in terms of the story, and they kind of like. I love how it was, it was kind of a flip on it. Mm-hmm. instead of it being about Charlton Heston's character, it's about Caesar. Yep. Where it's from the ace perspective. You emote, and you really, like, you connect with them. Like, it's yeah. not like the apes are the bad guys. And No, the apes are the good guys. Yeah, furthermore, in War for the Planet of the Apes, like, you feel for them. It's all about, like, freedom and being your own person, and, well, ape in this case, but, like, you know, mm-hmm. consciousness and what it is to be, a, you know, have cognitive thought. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so good. Oh, man, that first one, so good with, like, um, 
I still have all like all of it. So like James, James, like you see, you start with James Franco's character, and then you go to Caesar, right? And then they kind yeah. of blend. And like I love the idea that James Franco's character is trying to create this drug to cure Alzheimer's because his dad has it. Yep. And then he's kind of pretty much like creates this entire thing. And I like also too that every movie has different ma- like um, Man, human yeah. leads yeah. because we don't care about these guys. We care about Caesar. It's about Caesar. It's not about James Franco. It's not about the other guy. Yeah. Um, Can I just say also, like, the CGI in the new one is phenomenal. Like, yeah, because the other two, it's kind it's of... Right. Like, sometimes it looks good, sometimes it looks yeah. bad. This one is absolute sensation. Just yeah. the visuals in its sense. Like, Matt Reeves did a great job. Like, there's an, the opening scene, I won't give it away, but it is a bit of a battle scene. Cool, but, I like it. Yeah, and I'm it's such so well shot. There's over, like, the head camera work. There's, like, drones moving. That's awesome. It's uh, just a phenomenal, like... The film it's like a really gritty and it feels real and it's just yeah it's a, it's a phenomenal it's it looks great but I have to have you seen Apocalypse Now? no no I haven't it's very similar it's a that film or? that definitely references Apocalypse Now more than once more than like uh, Kong Skull Island did? <laughs> I forgot about Kong Skull Island uh, yeah no more than Kong Skull Island um, yeah, the ways of apes and Apocalypse Now I don't know but uh yeah, it's, it's it's basically a western event. Like event it's not actually a war movie. Uh, towards like, as it goes on, it's more of a western, more of a bit cool. of apocalypse now. Cool. Like also apocalypse it. now is a war movie, but yeah, a Vietnam war movie rather than like a World War Two war movie. Uh-huh. So it's I really liked it. It's my favorite in the franchise. For me, they steadily go up. Like when like Dawn has its problems, but I did prefer it to yeah. Rise. Uh, I don't know. I found. It was amazing, and there's a lot of great... We can talk about, like, the amazing scenes in that one, too, but I found it was longer, so it kind of... There was a bit of a drag? Yeah, it was a little bit overlong. I think War... War also is, like, one that peaks and troughs a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, it comes up, and then there's a little bit... It just kind of goes down. But I don't Which you get with movies like, like that, it, man. When yeah. a movie's two and a half hours, it's going to yeah. happen. I like it. it. It takes its time. It paces itself well. Yeah. It doesn't rush anything. It doesn't do a DCU. <laughs> it, just, it, it just takes time and it and it meanders along and it re- like honestly you could still have more film I know I think they, they're kind of quitting at the trilogy but they're going to do more films but this is kind of close with the trilogy so. so I will say this then because I forgot that in the first movie they set up um, the fact that people went to space yeah they didn't they? so you see a new you see um, I think it's um, like a in the background on the TV, it's saying, like, people just went in space. Yeah. Like, in the Mars trip or something. And then in, there's also a newspaper article. Yeah. So, that's, I believe, if they do a fourth one, it's going to be people coming to Earth yeah. and seeing the apes. Well, I said, I've heard that they've, I've, they, one of the things they are thinking of is remaking the original. That's what it seems they're leading to. Cause, but it might not be, like, a direct remake. Like, it would be a... Well, you, you couldn't because, like, we already know the twist. You have to change a bit, yeah. Yeah. Like they'd, uh, if if they're gonna do it completely different in a way, I wouldn't mind it. But I don't know. it would it would it, well. But then you get into uh, fucking Tim Burton territory where he's he literally admitted, "I have no idea what that ending means." Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> yeah, um, Tim Burton's bad. Pan Davis. Yeah. Well, best leave that alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one doesn't exist. But. Yeah. So yeah, so Rise of Planet Apes. So yeah, they set that up. I forgot they set that up. Yep. Um. I still, I still get, I still remember seeing this movie in theaters and um, whenever Caesar speaks for the first time, oh, yeah. me and my buddy literally turned to each other and we were like, what? <laughs> no. And even when it happens now, I still get chills, man. Like, it's well, he's so done, yeah. good. He stands up and says, like, he's say something. He's yeah. say something. And then he does, yeah. And um, just that, that moment where it's like, no, and then like, holy shit, they can talk. Like, well, it's, it's the whole power of speech, right? They, mm-hmm. Like, he, they, it's, apes, learn to get their speech and then the whole thing with like Alzheimer's is you start to lose your speech yeah yeah. so it's definitely God, um, man, you, you, you look into things so much more in depth than I, <laughs> I was just watching I'm like that was cool and you're like oh no it's actually symbolizing this and like, sure, <laughs> but like, yeah it's a uh, I love the, the trilogy and I'm, I hope they do a lot more but there was a the one problem with War for Band of the Apes it didn't do that well at the box office which could I reckon they'll make more but to be fair though, this was a terrible summer for movies. Yeah. This was like the worst one in a long time. It wasn't. It people like aren't going to the movies as much. Uh, but if, I think well, I think they're also saving their money for bigger movies. Star Wars. 
Star Wars are like all the all the Marvel movies and DC movies and stuff like that. They they're really going on that, but yeah, people are like just pumped for Star Wars. I mean, that's got to just clean it up, isn't it? Well, did you see they lost another director? Yeah, uh, Colin Trevorrow. That's yeah. right. I'm not too fussed with that. I didn't really care for Jurassic World. But what's going on with this idea that they lost the Lord Miller and then they lost this guy? Like, yeah, yeah. What's happening with that third one? Oh, um, uh, yeah. But that's also thanks to Matt Reeves, isn't it? Because he's doing the Matt Reeves. He's doing um, the Last Jedi. No, no, no. It's Ryan Johnson. Is he? Which one's Matt Reeves? Which one did Matt Reeves do then? Matt Reeves didn't do any. I thought Ryan Johnson did, um... Ryan Johnson's doing The Last Jedi. I thought he did, uh, what was it? New, not New Hope. <laughs> Force Awakens? No, the, um... Oh, uh, Rogue One? Oh, he's did, sorry, Matt Reeves is doing The Batman. I'm getting my... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting my fingers confused, I apologise. <laughs> I knew he was um, doing a big film, that's all I... Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so, then Rise, so you got a lot of great scenes, um... It's Franco was great in it. Obviously, I'm a big Franco guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, big Franco. Uh, but yeah, no, he's great. And then, uh, yeah, just all the little things like Caesar. You feel so bad for Caesar when like he draws like the home thing and then he erases it. Yeah. And then when like at the end when he's like you gotta come home, Caesar. He's like Caesar is home. Yeah. Um, and then I like probably the be- like the best thing about Donald the Planet of the Apes is when Koba marches all the apes down and just fucks everybody up yeah. when he's like. At, like they start losing kind of mm-hmm. and then he's like screw this like kicks a, uh, one of the apes off the horse gets on it just starts murking people with the gun <laughs> then takes over the tank yeah. and you got that sick scene where it's like go with the tank yeah Cole was oh, a like badass and the whole relation and then um, oh that's great too the build to it where it's yeah, like, he exactly. saves him from the bear yeah and yeah. then he's like on your side but then he's like I don't know I don't like how you're with the humans yeah and then he's he like he doesn't have oh, that attachment you. he's got that physical scar right that well, even uh, Maurice, the, uh, the ugly-looking fucker, rank tag or whatever, he's yeah. like, he's like, I don't have the same um, attachment. attachment to humans. Like, I only know them for every bad thing they did. Yeah. And at the end, too, when Caesar's like, I thought apes were better than humans, but we're the same. Yeah. It's like, it's fucking true. Exactly. Fucking Koba tried to set them up. Everything comes back around. Yeah. And he's kind of like a Jesus figure, too, eh? Oh, he I is. did get that. Yeah. I clued into that. He's a religious figure. Caesar's like Jesus. Wait till the third one. <laughs> oh, is he crucified? Oh, that'd be that'd be very on the nose. <laughs> like, that would be hiding it. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we want to talk more. I know. I mean, those are old movies. I just, I just rewatched them. I forgot how good they were. And I just love them, and yeah. I'm pumped to see the third one. Um, but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think that's. I don't know if you want to get into Logan Lucky. I don't really feel like getting into and I think we kind of. I'll briefly go over Logan Lucky. Yeah, I, don't know, I don't want to go into too much depth. It was good. It was good. It's it's, it's a good fun movie. It's a, it's a heist movie. It's um, very easy watching. Things are shoehorned in. Like the plot is a little bit um, convoluted. It's a little bit kind of like stop start stop start. It kind of it doesn't really flow as well as it could. But you kind of really attach yourself to the characters. You can't. You feel sorry for Channing Tatum. He's like a likable guy. Uh, Daniel Craig is great, actually. Surprisingly, as the eccentric southern uh, bomb guy, like that voice is just so weird to me when I hear it. I'm like, I don't know if I could handle a whole movie. He, this. he does it really well. Like, he's not. You, you forget you, pretty quickly. He's James Bond. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, that's cool. So quickly. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's it has its issues. It definitely sets itself up for a sequel. Um, but the, uh, Adam Driver kind of plays the goofy, uh, not goofy, but the kind of sulky guy, but a little bit more like, not Kylo Ren sulky. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's good fun. Um, there are issues with it, but it's worth a watch. And it's an interesting summer flick, I guess. Yeah, well, I saw the trailer for it. I was like, eh, maybe. I mean, it's not something you should rush out to go and see, but it's, it, you know, it's nice to have like an original movie that's not, well, original-ish. But, oh well, yeah. I mean it's compared to all the sequels and prequels, yeah, 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 yeah. remakes and shit like that. It's not a remake of anything. No, no, no. It, re- it references Ocean's Eleven and all that a lot, but it's not. Well, it, it, it's Steven Soderbergh. Right? Yeah, yeah, didn't he do mm-hmm. Ocean's movie? Okay, yeah. well, then, there you go. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a good movie. It's worth a watch, but I wouldn't go. Oh, you gotta go and see Logan Lucky. You gotta rush out right now. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. All right. Well, maybe I'll, I'll I'll go to watch. Maybe we can talk more in depth about it sometime. But yeah, as of right now, um, yeah, I haven't seen it. Uh, I guess I can just go quick into Goon Two then. Um, which I hate. I hate having to say this because I mean, I love Jay Baruchel. Um, and I loved Goon, the first one, so much, man. That's still, in my mind, the greatest hockey movie ever made. Even though there's not a lot of them out there, mm-hmm. it is... I mean, Slapshot I and say, Goon are... Slapshot. What, but it's so hard to um, compare them because they're completely different. They are, yeah. Um, that was definitely... Like, Slapshot was kind of like the tone of that era, right? Like, kind of 70s, 80s. Like. Yeah, and it's still like... I, I gotta rewatch it. I, I started watching a bit of it. And, like, it still has the same kind of, like... Um, it gets the locker room player mentality of hockey players. Mm-hmm. Um, but I like Goon because Goon kind of did it in terms of like, there's like, they are kind of caricatures of these types of people you see, but still those characters. So they weren't, yeah. they weren't, they were kind of like a bit over the top, but still what you would see from players in hockey. Um, but yeah, I mean, Goon too. it was just, I think you can kind of see, you could really tell because like, this one was directed by Jay Baruchel. Then you can kind of tell like the influence that like, um, Evan Goldberg and I can't remember who directed the first one. David, David Cohen, or, I, don't, I don't know the name. Um, David Gordon Green or something, maybe. Oh, yeah. um, the influence that he had, they had on kind of like toning down Jay Brown show's humor. Yeah. Because he kind of had, he, he kind of goes too over the top with it for yeah. Goon 2. And like TJ Miller, I love TJ Miller, but he had no place in this movie. <laughs> he does like, he does it with James Duffy. It's like a sports center type desk. Right. And um, James Duffy's like the straight guy, and TJ Miller's just the guy who like, just throws out a lot of, like, dumb one-liners and, like, swears a lot. Right. And it takes you out of the movie because it's, like, if this was, like, an actual sports show, yeah, it, it wouldn't be happening. No. That's, it just it That's took me out of the movie right, too yeah. much. Like, and, like, there was, like, three different storylines that they were going with, whereas, like, you could have just picked one and ran with it. Could They could have went with Rocky, man. They could have had a rematch with uh, Ross Boss Ray. They could have brought in a new guy like Clubber Lang, mm-hmm. who Wyatt Russell played, and had Doug have to beat him. But they kind of did it all, and it just didn't work. No? No. It was a shame. I was watching it. I mean, I'm seeing all this praise for it. I don't know. Like, they're saying it's a good, fun movie. Sure. But when you compare it to the first one, it just... it. I don't know. It, it just, doesn't have that spirit of Canada. No. And, like, Alicia Cuthbert's in it. I love her, but she was just mainly there to just be that, like... She plays the sister of the girl that... um Doug Mary's. Okay, yeah. Um, but she's just this chick who's like a foul mouth, like alcoholic. Right. Just wants to get drunk and like just says inappropriate things and you're like, uh, I guess sure. <laughs> I don't know, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't know. It it really disappointed. Yeah. yeah, sir, I know you're a big fan of the first one. Oh, I love the first one. I love it so much. <laughs> it's such a good hockey movie and such a good movie in general in like, terms of like this character, like, it's not just about hockey, it's about this guy who couldn't find his path in life and then finds it. Mm-hmm. And then he kind of, like, you also have this one character, Ross the Boss Ray, who um, likes playing hockey, but he kind of, he's not a big fan of what he's become. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just this goon to everybody. Yeah. And he kind of, he's looking for that guy to kind of take over. And then when he finally gets that beating, he's like, yes, thank you. And then that's why when he comes back, it's like, he comes back in the second one. Oh, and he, like, joins the Highlanders. Uh, and this scene where it's like, ah, oh, why is he just on the team now? It's like, he retired, like, he got his ass kicked. He, he had to come back in a better way. Yeah, yeah. And he just came back, and I was like, he was his mentor, and then, he, I don't know, it just bugged me. Uh, that was a shame. Yeah, they kind of, I don't know. I'm sorry, Jay. I love you, man. I hope to meet you someday. I oh, know, I met you once, but yeah. just said hi. Got a picture. But yeah, it was just, yeah. I don't, I don't want to shit on it, but yeah. I just yeah, love the nice. first one so much. Maybe that's why. Yeah. But anyways, I don't know. I just wanted to make a quick road trip into TV. You're going to be annoyed. but uh, No, I mean, you can if you want to kind of... No, you're just going to be annoyed with the content. I'm going to choose to... Are you going to talk about Game of Thrones or something? No, actually. I'm going to uh, talk about David Mitchell and Robert Webb's new show, Back. So, you're not a this, Peep Show fan, but... That's kind of uh, just... I mean, when we were talking about movies, you're talking about... I, I just literally... Throw this I literally just, like, watched it this morning, so I kind of, like, it's fresh in my mind. And, like, it's... I know you're not a Peep Show fan. Yeah. Well, that's been heavily established in our conversations. But uh, it's at, it's it's definitely a different tone. It's a different style. It's not as kind of grounded as Peep Show, but it, it is actually really funny. Uh, it's basically about... Uh, David Mitchell plays this kind of 
failed lawyer who has to deal with, like his dad's business so his dad just died and he has to kind of deal with it and be like the whole head of the family but he's kind of weak-willed insecure or neurotic or that and then but Robert Webb comes in and he's this uh, and he was his foster brother for like five months and he's kind of like plays this whole cuckoo idea that he kind of comes in he's very flamboyant like character who tries to take over pretty much and this is the pairing of them two again and it's just it was pretty funny it's worth a watch cool so I thought I'd just plug that <laughs> <laughs> pretty quick some British TV shows uh sure I guess cool yeah. check it out I guess <laughs> I don't know if you're gonna say that I'll just say quickly um by the Concords <laughs> oh yes loved it I uh, got one one episode left oh yeah finale I also found too though the biggest my I'm the biggest fan of just um, Rice Darby Rice Darby Rice Darby Rice Darby yeah who's gonna be a uh, just for last he is yeah I want to see um, him. but I just, yeah I'm a big fan of him and also um, I'm working on a New Zealand accent so I might pull that out. <laughs> oh God. I can say Brit Brit yeah Brit yeah Brit is it but Brit 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 oh hey, Brett <laughs> Brit Jermaine uh, the Flight of the Concords was great I really hope they do another season. I oh, know they're talking about the touring again and they're talking about another season or movie. Oh, cool, I'm into it. Oh, I don't want a movie. You can't. No, I don't want a movie. I don't know TV how show. Just do, just do like six episodes. Yeah. Just do it. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that's uh, all we got for today. Yeah, that's about it. Um, kind of all the place, like I said. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we hit every point we wanted to. But. Oh, well, like, yeah, so, I mean, we're also, this is, you know, we're just getting into this. Um, but yeah, we're going to start releasing more content um, on this channel. So, you know, if you like it, you know, hit that like button, hit the well, subscribe, subscribe yeah. button, like and subscribe, yeah. share. I don't know why people say share, but also share. If you want, you don't have to. Um, can't make you. And then, yeah, just, you know, keep uh, keep your eyes open for uh, for more content, more, you know. Oh, and on this channel, too, we also have a few sketches on there. Check those out if you like them. Yeah. And But, yeah, other than that, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll uh, have a good day. talk to you guys later. You'll sincerely ask guys. Oh, God. <laughs>